So brilliant artists don't tend to walk alone, right? I'm thinking of um, uh, where you got Dostoevsky and Tolstoy, who are then who were inspired by Pushkin as well as others. Um, you've got the Renaissance painters and sculptors who were kind of around at the same time. So were there any other famous contemporary playwrights or who did he draw inspiration from? That's a great question. Um, his most famous contemporaries were, were Ben Jonson, Christopher Marlowe, or probably the two most famous, Thomas Kidd. There were a few other sort of minor, but the, you know. So this doesn't say much because I don't know much about anything. Uh, you but know, I haven't heard of those fellas. Uh, does he tower above them, or are they comparable in skill? In my view, he towers ab above them. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Ben Johnson was a good playwright. Um, I don't particularly like his dramas. I'm not uh, attracted to them. Um, Christopher Marlowe wrote a magnificent play called um, "The Jew of Malta." It's it's an extraordinary play. And he, he did a good play on, on Dr. Faustus as well. Um, so Marlowe was, was a gifted playwright. Um, you know, I'm, I'm maybe not being fair to Johnson. I, maybe I need to learn to like him better. But, but you know, he was certainly very popular. And he was a great poet, too. Um, so you know, th there were some impressive figures around him. But that's another part of the enigma of Shakespeare biography. Um, and this, so this sense of... of in 1592, a guy named Thomas Green wrote a little pamphlet called A Groat's Worth of Wit, where he's complaining about Shakespeare. And I think he's he's not too indirectly saying, you know, he's competing with the so-called university wits, the real educated men who who know, you know, are educated, they've they've gone to the universities, they know the tradition. This guy's bombasting out his blank verse and, you know, he, he styles himself, he's adorning himself with our feathers, as he says. Mm. And um so there's this sense of him being an upstart. I mean, Green calls him an upstart. So he, he's on the London scene. You have the university wits. You have these better educated men. And so th this ties back to the question of where Shakespeare came from. Um, that's part of the enigma of this man is that he's the son of a very likely illiterate Glover who received an excellent education at the King's New School, no doubt, um, but didn't go to university. Um, you know, in his immediate family, they weren't particularly educated people. Um, mm. So there is, it, it's, that's part of, of, of the, the kind of the miracle of this guy is that it, it's, it, it's, it's almost as if the heavens opened up and this person of, of unbelievable skill and creativity and, and capability just found his venue and, and, and. Do we have historical evidence that he was thought to be brilliant in his time uh, as he lived? I mean, you well, already said that he was he was more famous than maybe some people realize, but uh, I, I would just I would simply point to any serious study of his adult life in 1592 from London till his retirement would show you that um, he he was an eminently successful playwright. He was known by reputation to two monarchs favorably. The King James the first directly patronized William Shakespeare's um, uh, acting company, and I'm not saying it's solely on the strength of Shakespeare as the writer, but he was clearly a a major commodity. I mean, his name alone carried tremendous power, uh, you know, because of the success of his of his work. So, mm, okay. it, his 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 reputation and his success as an adult in the London stage world seems beyond, um, you know, beyond any, any question. He was enormously successful. And um, yeah, so, and which makes it even more unusual that it's why he didn't seem to leave any indication of what was to become of his own work. That's what, that's just a big enigma. So if my math is correct, he's born in 1564. Yeah, correct? Yes. Or no? He retires at 1592. Does that mean he's done writing by no, that no, point? No, no, no. No, he gets to London in 1592. Oh, I see, I see. And so he's 28 when he gets yes. to London. And likely, you know, this is another sort of hole, but so from 1592, so probably at least 1611 or so, he's okay. living in London. And he's just doing his professional work right. and really establishing himself. It seems that by the scholars are I, i'm not sure anybody knows exactly when he definitively left london and went back to stratford but at some point he retires okay. and goes back to stratford for the last few years of his life where he's not writing any plays anymore and and, and so on and he and he'd already established his reputation and made a lot of money okay so so he's he's in london and he's doing his thing there are there are multiple movements called the anti-stratfordian hypotheses okay 
where Shakespeare, see, because you asked this question, how do you account for Shakespeare? Who are his equals? Who influenced him? Yep. Um, a number of scholars seem to believe that the son of an illiterate Glover from Stratford I simply see. could not have written. And, right. it, and this is based on no serious evidence. This is largely, it's a classist argument where they're saying, this guy's just, he clearly can't be the one producing all this. So they propose, there are all these theories. The most famous one is Edward de Vere, Earl of Oxford. And I'm not studied in why they think it's him, but, but you know, they, they come up with, you know, there's Edward de Vere, Earl of Oxford, Francis Bacon, um, hmm. Christopher Marlowe, the, some of the crazier ones. Was Bacon ones. a contemporary? Yeah. He was, okay. Enough, uh, enough of a contemporary. Yeah. And, um, some of the crazier ones have, they've proposed Queen Elizabeth herself. Uh -huh. They have proposed King James. They have proposed uh, the Archbishop of Canterbury. I mean, it, it gets wild. And this is primarily because he shouldn't have been this brilliant, given his father and limited education. Yes, yeah, so they, yeah. they, I, I forget, I was I was reading some, some one of these anti it, 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 it's about this, this lowers the dignity of England to suggest that the son of an illiterate Glover could be our greatest. It, it's just a class-based argument. They just simply can't. And But here's where I, I concede something to them, and it goes back to your question. There really is no accounting for the unbelievable power of this man's uh, uh, creation, uh, his skill, his genius. It, it, it just seems to literally come out of nowhere. Um, it's it's very difficult to account for. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Before you go, do us a favor, leave a comment, let us know what you thought of the video, like, and subscribe.